Hi there, and welcome to our Sanctuary Church Good Friday online communion service. We're coming together tonight from our homes to yours to remember together the price that Jesus paid when he gave his life on the cross for you, for me, and to pay for the sins of the world. Over the next half hour, you're going to hear some encouraging words from the scriptures, from your pastors, from our Sanctuary Church staff, from our hearts to yours. We're going to be enjoying communion together, so take this time. Make sure you grab a Bible so you can follow along with us as we share the scriptures this evening. Get yourself uh, some juice, some uh, wafers. Use anything that you can find in your house to stand in for the, uh, the blood and body of Christ Jesus. Because we want you to participate in the end of our service in taking communion with us. This is a very sacred time. It's a worshipful and reflectful time. And we just hope that you will participate right where you are with us this Good Friday. So sit back and relax. Let's get into God's Word tonight. Pastor Duane? Hello, this is Pastor Duane. Darling and I are so blessed and uh, thankful uh, for this time of the season, and especially in these unique times, uh, to be a part of such a great church and a great family. And I want to read a scripture uh, that found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53 that was written, I believe, for times like this. Isn't it amazing how God knows and His Word is so true uh, that it applies to every moment and every season of our life. Uh, just read along with me. You have your Bibles, uh, Isaiah 53, and we're going to start at verse 4 through verse 6. Very familiar, but, but so uh, needed in these times to remind us of just how much God cares and how much He looks out for us, and He's looking out for us today. Uh, Isaiah 53, 4 says this, it says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. We are in his hands today. Be encouraged. Celebrate. Be thankful. For God is still on the throne. God bless you. So much for tuning in tonight and worshiping with us on this Good Friday service. I just encourage you where you are right now um, just to close your eyes and lift your hands and let's just worship Jesus and thank him for the blood that he shed for us on Calvary. That's why we're here tonight. That's what we're doing and we're just here to thank him for his blood.
Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form. He humbled himself in becoming obedient to the point of death, even death. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Yeah. 
Hello folks, this is Pastor John and Lori. We're here looking forward to joining with you tonight in communion. It's really such a beautiful time as we really go back on this Good Friday, just the night before when Jesus shared a Passover meal with his disciples, transforming that into this time of communion that we would share forever. We just call this time the legacy of the Last Supper and how that Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, he's sitting with his disciples and there in that transformative moment, everything changed from that day forward. And now today we can live forward with the celebration of what Christ has done for us. This is the meal that consisted of the bread and the wine. It was the Old Testament Passover meal. The meal was to be prefigured his death as the sacrificial lamb of God. In John 1 and 29, behold the lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. The Lord had carefully and prophetically chosen these elements so that they would symbolize the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the broken body which was given for us. They paid for the sacrifice of my sins and your sins, whereby vicariously he paid the price on the cross for our sins. I think there's a few things we need to recognize. You might go into your Bibles in uh, Luke the 22nd chapter or even over to 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter where we read about this incredible story of what took place. Let me just give you a few things before we actually go in to worshiping together in this time of communion on Good Friday. Let's remember first of all that when Christ came together and he told the disciples that they need to prepare the elements for the Passover, that it really became a time of reassignment whereby when Christ sat down with them, they knew that he was going back and it was all the way whereby 1,500 years ago, 3,500 years back from us today, whereby they would celebrate the Passover. Now you read that in your Bible in uh, Exodus, the 12th chapter, whereby in the 10th and the last and final plague that God brought to Egypt, whereby he would deliver his people, was a night that the Bible said that the death angel would come and, and move through all. And anyone who was not covered by the blood there would death come to their first male child. The Israelites were saved because Christ, because God told them to take the sacrificial lamb and to place it upon the doorpost in the lentil. And that through that, when the death angel came by in verse 13 and he saw the blood, he would pass over them. And that's what they were celebrating that night with Jesus Christ. But when Christ took it, he not only looked back, but he reassigned that Passover into a moment whereby they would recognize when he said, take and eat this bread and to drink this wine. He was telling them the Passover now is my life. It'll be my broken body and my shed blood. This shall change you from this day forward. And you're gonna remember this all the days until I return again. To be with you. Isn't that wonderful that what was memorialized before now has become the way of life, that we celebrate the death of Jesus Christ. What was only for the nation of Israel is now for everyone who would ever believe. As you read in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the apostle Paul talks about it. And he tells us that out of that, this time should be a time of great remembrance that we, we remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. It is a time of reflection and repentance whereby we, we look and we examine ourselves, and we look into the word of God and we ask the Holy Spirit to look at our life where we come together and say, Lord, what is it about my life that isn't right before you? It is a time as well of, of renewal whereby God is renewing in us the remembrance of the covenant of what Christ has done, whereby he on the cross fulfilled the Old Testament and he brought us into the New Testament. And we have the assurance of that covenant through his spilled blood on the cross and through his broken body for you and I. And all who believe are now a part of that covenant. And so out of that, it leaves us with the understanding 
this isn't just a time whereby we, we come with a sadness in our heart. This is Good Friday because out of the goodness of his death, the greatness of his sacrifice, we have hope and we have life. We can look back and say that our sins have been forgiven. We can look and find strength and courage that every day Jesus Christ is our covenant partner and we can look into the future and we can know that Jesus Christ said to continue in this until he comes again. And every time we take communion, we are reminded of that covenant and we remember with great rejoicing that Christ himself is gonna come again and he's gonna receive his children back unto himself. This covenant of hope, this covenant of promise, this covenant of purpose that he's given to us. And as we look at that, I think there's some things that we need to remember that through this, Christ has given to us. Communion is a time of spiritual identification in which we, the believers, reaffirm our faith in Calvary's finished work and Christ's future to come. The bread represents his body and the cup represents the covenant he gives to every believer. Just as the Passover is significant in their deliverance from Egypt, so is the blood and the body of Jesus Christ significant in that we are delivered from sin. And it's much more than just saying on this time that we enter in this spiritual day to celebrate not only what he's done, but what he's done for every single person who believes. We look at scriptures and we realize that what we receive here and what we remember is that we have the forgiveness of our sins. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 1 and 7 that in Christ we have redemption through his blood, which is the forgiveness of sin. Also, we have the peace of God. In Romans 5 and 1, the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have the peace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. It means to be brought back together. Also, and maybe for some, this is one of the most important things, we have access to God. You know, in this time of, of, of wanting answers and looking for hope, I am so glad that my hope lies beyond books, beyond the government, beyond any kind of bailout, but that my access and answers are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.18 says that through him we have access to the Father. That means that I can boldly go before the throne of grace and find grace and mercy in the time of our need. We also find freedom from the devil's power in our lives. In Galatians 5 and 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with Christ, who hath made us free, and be not intertangled again with the yoke of bondage. Thank God for his freedom, for who the Son makes free is free indeed. And really, lastly, Christ's intercession for us that the Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us. So not only did he pay the price for us here at Calvary, but also he continues to intercede on our behalf. And sometimes we wonder, are we gonna be able to make it? Just know that Christ is interceding on your behalf and know that when we partake in the Lord's Supper, when we come together and we rejoice, we remember what he has done, what he is doing, but we also remember he is continuing to ever intercede for you and I. I think it's time that we go ahead and receive communion together. And as we do, I think we need to recognize what a great time of remembrance as the Apostle Paul said that as often as we drink this cup and eat this bread, we show forth or we remember the Lord's death until he comes. It should be a time of, of celebration. It should be a time of humility. It should be a time of great thankfulness. So I think now it's time for us to give you an opportunity to prepare and recognize that as we partake on this beautiful, beautiful Good Friday, we remember not only the sacrifice, but the celebration 
of what Calvary means to us. And so we take in the symbolism, first of all, just this cracker which speaks of the broken body of Jesus Christ and how that everything he went through, the torment, the pain, and the brokenness was all for you and I, the Bible said, for the joy that was before him. He endured the cross, despised the shame, and he now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Honey, would you pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you tonight, God. We are just blessed, Father, by you every day. God, we are thankful that you came and that you gave that ultimate sacrifice of your life for ours, God. We are not worthy, God, but yet you did the ultimate sacrifice. And we just want to come here tonight and say thank you, God, and honor you with our lives. Let us live whole lives that are pleasing to you, that are concentrated just on you, God, that everywhere we go, God, that our words are, are blessed, God, because you're coming through us, Lord. I just ask tonight, God, that you would bless this bread as we take this as a symbol of your body. Tonight, God, we just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here at home, you can join with us. It was also interesting that as Christ looked out and he told him to take that cup, the disciples thought about the innocent lamb whose blood was shed and they were there in memorial celebrating what God had done for them, not realizing that in just a few short hours, Christ would be the perfect, perfect lamb of God who would shed his blood for you and I. You know, it was Peter who said in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, for we were not redeemed with silver and gold and by the vain conversations and traditions of your forefathers, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, is a lamb that was without blemish and without spot. Jesus shed his perfect, sinless blood for you and I. And when we partake of this cup, we recognize that. And we recognize that every promise that was ever made, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 1.20, that all the promises are made secure through Jesus Christ that all of those promises are for us, the promise of salvation, deliverance, healing, and hope. They're all there. So I wanna invite you to join with us. Let's pray. Father, God, we thank you that you've seen us in our sin, but you've seen us beyond that, that you would send your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. His blood would be spilled out, not for a select few, not for only the redemption of a nation, but for the redemption of all nations and all people, from the worst to the very best, all that would make heaven their home would come through Calvary's cross. And tonight, God, we recognize the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice for us, not in our perfection, but God, in our sin, you came and gave your life for us. So tonight we recognize and we receive we rejoice, and God, we thank you for what sacrifice was made for us. We bless those tonight that join with us, and God, let us remember, as we in covenant look forward to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join with us.
celebration than the celebration that we have together in communion. Thanking the Lord for what he has done, for what he is doing, and for one day when he comes to receive his children home. Dear Lori and I, thank you for letting us come into your home as you came into our home tonight. And we pray that God would bless you and keep you. That God would lift up his countenance unto you and be gracious unto you. That God would cause his face to shine upon you. And that God would give you peace all the days of your life. And that the name of our God would be upon you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. We are so glad to have you in our home tonight. And we just want you to know we are so excited for the time that we could come back together. But until then, we just ask you to join us Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, with us, our sanctuary family, and anyone else that would like to just join us and come be, come be a part of our family. We just invite you at 10 a.m. to get online and watch this service and rejoice with us because our Savior is risen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like Sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. 